time has come to record a video about Hyper-V and uh, it's going to be easier for some of you to set it up at home because the only real thing you need is the operating system of a server version which supports Hyper-V, for example Windows of the Center edition. Uh, we will use the existing VM we have created in the previous video where we installed Windows 2019 server on a VMware machine and it should be as easy as creating a role. So in the server manager uh, you would enable the role of Hyper-V and that would be all that you need to do to create a virtual machine server. Uh, despite of the fact that you install uh, the Hyper-V so what seems to be on top of Microsoft Windows, in reality it converts the operating system into a virtual machine. So Hyper-V is still native, bare metal or type 1 hypervisor, depends on how you want to call it. And on top of the hypervisor, uh, the drivers and the operating system runs together with virtual machines. So theoretically your host component is not much different from any virtual machine you would create after you started. And the most notable uh, difference you would notice if you checked components or programs, and you would see that there is a new service which is called Hyper-V Virtual Machine Management Service, Hyper-V VMMS, in short VMMS, that would appear in the list of your Windows services. And it would also create its own type of Windows events. Windows events, uh, which are basically like logs you can check in the event viewer, and notably, if you would try to troubleshoot issues with Hyper-V machines, you would check a section of Windows events called Hyper-V VMMS. I'll demonstrate it once we have machines running. So I have cleaned up the snapshots from the Windows machine. Now it's running on the base disk again. And let's launch web console and proceed with Hyper-V installation. I'm going to log in first using the administrator which was set up once we installed Windows and now we would like to go to the server manager on the server manager uh, we need to find the local computer so it will give the local server and here we can find the computer name this one and now I can go to the manage add roles and features menu and in this menu, this is where you can enable different features, including volume to deduplication, uh, file services of different kinds, etc. So right now we want to install a role for this server, which would be called Hyper-V, this one. So as we check it, we should install uh, the management tools and PowerShell components as well. And that should be everything we need. And now after clicking Next and confirming this, we should be able to have this. Uh, we can also create an Ethernet network adapter, which is also called VMXNet3. It's a similar type that you have in VMware. We will enable it. And uh, we'll probably go with Kerberos for authentication. And uh, the default location will be on the C volume. Uh, because right now the server has only one disk, but we can change it later. And at this point, we just need to wait until the features are installed. Okay, now the only thing left is to restart the machine. Which is required since it will need to reconfigure the operating system. So let's go. So right now the system is being reconfigured to work as a virtual machine. That's why it got restarted one more time. It started up, it reconfigured itself, and now it's rebooting as VM.
So let's log in into the system and observe the changes. So now Hyper-V role is enabled, so we should be able to find Hyper-V manager uh, in the list of installed components. Hyper, here we go. So this application is installed, which we can pin to the taskbar to have it, and now we can create and control virtual machines. So this is the name of our host, which we could rename if you wanted to, because right now it doesn't really <laughs> look that nice. And this is where we can simply click new and virtual machine. And at this point, the guide is very similar to the one in VMware. You specify the name, for example, test VM one. You select where you want to put it right now. I put it in program data folder on the C volume. And just to confirm, I should have some space left uh, there. Uh, yep, plenty because I gave it four gigabytes of space. So there is at least 10 gigabytes free. Um, we can select different types of generations because uh, if you want to use older hardware, you may want to use generation one. Generation two will be able to use new types of features such as shared VHDX, VHD set, and uh, which may look or sound alien to you, but basically shared disks of new format. And then we select how much RAM, let's say one gigabyte, uh, and uh, we want to connect it to the network that we created, this network adapter. So it's a virtual switch which was created. It doesn't exist as a physical network because in the setting of the computer, I'll make a separate video about virtual networks and VMware and Hyper-V. But right now, just imagine that it's like a VPN tunnel which lets your guest computers connect to the public network. Here we select the disks. I'm going to give it only one and I'll give it five gigabytes and uh, after we do this by the way this disk is going to be dynamically expanding so it's thin by default after that we want to load ESO file ISO file if you want to install operating system so Hyper-V makes it very easy to install Windows on it because you basically click this option to do the same that we would do in VMware when you would go to the settings, connect ISO file to media to dr drive, reboot it. Here it's included in the installation package, but we'll decide to install it later. And after we review the summary, we can click finish and the machine will appear. This machine is right now off. You can run it with right click, start and you can check what's going on with right click connect. So this is the console, which will show you what's happening on the machine. Right now, it tries to boot through the network because there is nothing else to do, but otherwise it's a fully functioning virtual machine. Uh, from the sa uh, same menu, from this uh, menu, you can take checkpoint, which is similar to uh, a snapshot in VMware. Uh, I'll make a separate uh, video about VSS volume shadow copy and that should cover checkpoint creation uh, and uh, otherwise it's a properly running machine you can do whatever you want with it. I mentioned Hyper-V VMNS so let's look at the services uh, system services task manager and services and if you sort by name you'll find there is a Hyper-V VMMS service, which is called VMMS for short. Here it is. VMMS, the first CD, which is running. And this is the service which allows you to actually control and manage virtual machines. So technically, if you kill this service, your machine will still work, but you'll be unable to manage it through Hyper-V Manager. Also, this Hyper-V Manager supports the feature of Microsoft failover clustering. So if you have a cluster of Windows servers and you turn them into Hyper-V role, you can manage a cluster of servers for virtual machines. And finally, if you open event viewer, you should be able to observe activity on your machines. So here, that would be application logs. So it's not a main Windows log. It's coming from Microsoft Windows. And this is where you'll find Hyper-V VMMS uh, events here. So. In this folder of events, you can check the administrative events. For example, here you can find that there was some error. 
most likely we couldn't enable migration because it's turned on first. But we need to check that. Yeah, because the computer is not part of the domain. So here you can clearly see at first why the migration wouldn't work if I try to do that. Because the computer is not a part of the domain. These events are very useful for the administrator to check what's going on and to find any issues. And also you should be able to see the start of the machine somewhere here. Here, the machine was realized, the machine was created. And the start must be in the operational. No, this is where the disk was created. Where do I find the start of the machine? Maybe it's the Hyper-V worker, let me check. Yeah, so in the Hyper-V worker, so there are a bunch of different events here, you can see the start of the machine. So following these events, you can fully explore and monitor the activity of your Hyper-V server. The same way you would handle any other application which has full event integration. This is typically what uh, could be checked if there are any troubles or problems for details. There are more advanced troubleshooting steps, of course, than just checking the events, but these are the most obvious steps to do, even if everything is working fine, just to confirm that everything is going on as you expected. So this is a very brief look into Hyper-V. As you see, the console is quite simple. It looks similar to the lower clustering console for uh, Microsoft clusters. It has the same concepts, but a bit different implementation in comparison to VMware. And also it is very easy to install on a running Windows machine. The downside of Hyper-V, I would say, is that the footprint of Hypervisor itself, so Windows host operating system, is pretty large. Uh, it's like I would take like one gigabyte, and that would be it. Uh, I'm not sure about the latest version, but it's not as big as Windows. You could run a core version of Windows, but then you would have to manage everything through PowerShell or command line. Otherwise, it's a fully functioning hypervisor, which is very popular in big environments, and it integrates with many backup solutions as well. So uh, once we have a video about volume shadow copy, I'll be able to explain better how checkpoints work and how backups work. Right now we are on version 2019, so it actually has a lot of features integrated including checkpoint and backup technology, which is new for Windows 2016 and 2019. Older versions of Hyper-V, such as 2008 and 2012, uh, didn't have a specific technology for backups of virtual machines. The checkpoints were relying on old volume shader copy technology, which is used for Windows restore points. But we won't get too much into these details because otherwise the video will become too long. You can go ahead and make a Hyper-V server right now if you have access to a Windows server anywhere and you can start playing around with settings of the machine configuration but otherwise it is pretty straightforward. If you have any questions about specific setups you may want to know about like cluster shared volumes or scale out file server clusters I'll be happy to answer your questions in the comments. If you enjoyed the video make sure to like and subscribe just to follow the rest of the education process. These videos don't matter much by themselves and I will welcome any comments. I wish you a great day.